life on Saturn presents Nothing We got nothing We got nothing We got nothing Nope There we are Okay so welcome to a brand new episode of We Got Nothing Red with your host Ahan Azizil. Hello, and our very special guest Joe Ferris. Hello, Joe. Hello, Ahan. How's it going? <laughs> oh, you know, it, it's it's going fairly all right, all things considered. I guess uh, you know, lots of things going on in the world. I know that we are talking today about how they're are lots of things going on in the world and how sometimes that can really affect us and we do things to kind of maintain our own wellness you know isn't that right joe absolutely i do things every day and the struggle is real yeah absolutely absolutely i mean and and, you know anybody who knows you joe ferris like two things they know about him he can play a mean banjo and Uh he can draw like the dickens (laughs) Uh oh. <laughs> He's quite well known for his character art all throughout the town. The wonderful work he does for the senior foe and just all around mental health work that he does and the lives that he touches through his art. I just, I think it's such a great representation of what art therapy can do in a community setting. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. And I, I hope that's true. I hope, I hope I do have a positive impact you and me both and i see that positive impact i do i see it in everyone who talks to me about you in my work at nami you know i'll I'll come across many people in the community that's one name i hear over and over is joe ferris joe ferris hey you know joe ferris i'm like yeah i know joe ferris and you know it's always a happy occasion people love you you know you are you're definitely loved what you do is is very unique and very very cherished so on that topic why don't you tell me what art and music has meant to you in your own personal wellness journey yeah so what has art and music meant to me in my mental health journey I think that there's a lot of different approaches to art and music, the arts in general. And I think there, there's a lot of different ways to interpret these mediums, to, to experience these mediums. And sometimes it's more of a therapeutic art therapy type approach. Sometimes it can be like a, a calming escape from the busy day-to-day society. And then sometimes it becomes something different in your life. And for me, at this point in my life, I would say it is something different because it absolutely does help my mental health, like music and art, but not in the same way that art therapy or or music therapy would help somebody. For me, I'm, I'm very passionate about the skills involved in music and art. So while maybe once in my life, definitely when I was younger, like art was more of an escape. Now it's more of a, a productive way of sometimes making income of sometimes giving something back to people, maybe the elderly or a friend utilizing artistic skill. Other than that, it's a reason to wake up. It's a reason to keep going. And I think in essence, define the true spirit of, of recovery, maintaining wellness and uh, what you were talking about, because even, even when you were talking about giving back with that skill, that in itself is the essence of the model of recovery. You know? Yeah. All of it. It's kind of beautiful that it's almost kind of built in to the spirit of what you're doing. Really, I really do admire that. And I think that that skill itself, it goes a long way because it's that the interpretation that we have, you know, we can all interpret something many ways, but then sometimes there's that unifying thing that pulls us all in. And that in itself can be such a powerful unifying force. Recently, I know you drew a a pretty known face to the public all over saying, oh, hey, it's that person, it's that person. And then those people started conversing and they're like, oh, you know them? Yeah. And then it was just such a, a point of light and it kind of highlighted that light that can be brought from connections in the community. And I think 
that in itself is just the intricacies. Maybe I'm reading into things too much and I want to ascribe these uh, notions, but I, I just, I truly feel that. I feel that that connection right there is in essence what it's all about, bringing that medium full circle, uh, even in its own rugged individualism, has its point of bringing people together. Yeah, I like that idea of it's it's a very individual activity and kind of an individual skill, but it, it in a way it's not because it brings people together and it connects with people. Yeah, exactly. And as you said, you used it as an escape for a long time, so that could have even been a way for you to connect to others by showing people how you feel without necessarily saying how That's, I have definitely experienced in my life, it's easier sometimes to express yourself through pictures rather than words in the topic of mental health. That's absolutely true. Very true. That's such a common thing that's used, even in, in counseling. I've even used that you know, in my own therapy sessions where I had to draw things out <laughs> and like, yeah. you know, just kind of map things out for myself. I absolutely understand that. It's such a powerful thing. There's a reason the the expression exists that pictures worth a thousand words. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Totally. I wanted to talk a little more on your music. I am a huge fan of your banjo. I love I love your album. I actually still listen to it, believe it or not. Quite uh, nice. I do. I love it. I enjoy it. Uh, you have a very comforting voice, I must say. You have a very comforting singing voice. I think you and your brother are just very talented musicians. I love the stuff y- y'all do, and I-, I just have to ask: Is there anything on the horizon again? Uh, any plans for for my brother and I, or uh, just or in general? In general, yeah. My brother actually moved far away, so that put a pretty big kibosh to all our music endeavors, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But I have recorded music at a professional studio down in Catskill. I really want to release it. And at this point, it's just about making the time and the effort to actually do that to release music <laughs> yes no no that's totally understandable it is a lot goes into that absolutely yeah um, so yeah. so yeah it's the music's there it's just <laughs> i have not come upon a position to get it out yet yeah it's very dense work it is absolutely yep several steps it's one involved. thing one thing to make music another thing to share it with the world very true absolutely you're a man who uh, wears many hats. It's something that is pretty common in, in our field of work where, uh, you know, we work in mental health and everything. We usually wear many hats <laughs> and yeah. have to say, you know, it's very impressive just seeing that day in and day out and seeing the effect that you have with people and, and you and still able to maintain your craft and your art. And, you know, that's, that in itself is, is just incredibly admirable. So I guess uh, what I'm really getting around to is, do you have time for banjo practice anymore in all of this mess? Like, because I know that was a kind of a big thing for you. Yes, yes, I do. I am very fortunate to have a unique position working at at an assisted living center, working with the elderly. So I play music for the elderly regularly. And I'm able to bring in new songs, not songs that I've written, but songs that I've found online that I think the residents would relate to. So through through my work, I'm able to continue to build a repertoire as well as um, find more and more entertaining music to share with my folks. Well, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So so that that's essentially. I mean, that's my practice. That's that's the music I'm doing these days, essentially. Huh. Well, we get right back to that point about art, a lot of its intention being to to connect, yeah. relate to. That's exactly what you're doing with it. And it's there. there's there's just such a pure beauty in that, in just that concept alone. The joy that you must bring to these people when they have that moment where they relate to a song or maybe never heard of a song before, but they're like, yeah, you know, this, this I'm really vibing with this. Yeah. What does that feel like whenever you witness that moment? It's probably the best, I would say. It's, it's, it's definitely one of the best. One of the best 
whatever highs or one of the best meaningful experiences at work is when I play a song that the folks know it's bringing back positive feelings, positive memories. They get lit up. Mm -hmm. And when they're going from a state of boredom and not feeling overly happy, let's say, then a song can bring that back to them. It's really special. And it's, it's really a moment in time. You know, the world could end tomorrow, could die tomorrow, anything could go wrong. But we shared that special moment of joy and fun. And that's, that's, I think that's meaningful. That's what it's all about. Man, I, that hit deep. Are you well-versed in the, the teachings of impermanence? I'm not well-versed in it. Sounds cool. It's actually a lot like what you described in the sense that nothing's permanent and we would be here today. We could be gone tomorrow, like you said. It's about those meaningful experiences and whatever meaning we can get from each of those experiences moment to moment. I agree. Yeah. I think it's, I think in many ways, it's all we have is just those, those moments of joy shared with others. Man. Yeah, just X marks the spot on that one. <laughs> well, like uh, this moment, I'm I'm enjoying you so much, Ahan. <laughs> hey, like anybody yeah. out there listening, I hope you're having that moment too. <laughs> yes, I don't care. I don't care if the world ends tomorrow. We've had this moment right now. This moment right here. This very moment. This one right here. The second. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling ex existential. I'm going into the future. Ah! Whoa! <laughs> oh my I... god, the future's coming so fast. Ah! Whoa! <laughs> Actually, that's kind of funny. It's a perfect segue into our next segment. Future. Yes, yeah. <laughs> the future. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Future, come on. <laughs> this segment is called "Did You Know." I briefly described it to you earlier, so where... This we... is like Never Have I Ever, right? <laughs> almost. Same concept? <laughs> almost, exact, almost exact opposite. Because <laughs> I never win at that game. No, I, I never win at that game either. <laughs> so, did you know, basically where we dole out fascinating fact to each other with our, our best shot without laughing... And an impersonation. And of course, we have to start the fact delivery with the phrase, did you know? And so for today, I've chosen the voice of Christopher Walken, uh, because that is such a distinct type of voice that I'm pretty sure anyone will get that you're doing Christopher Walken, because he just talks a certain way. Anyone's going to get when you're doing it. I don't know about me. I won't, see, now this is why I want to do this, because I want to see you do Christopher Walken You want to so see bad. me try. I do, I do. And I think right. it's going to be so good. I, it's going to be well, so much better than you think it is. Oh boy, we'll see. <laughs> okay, okay. So would you like me to go first? Is that what you're saying? No. No, you want to go first? Okay. <laughs> if I had my choice, I'd go first. All right, go, go, go for it. Yeah, because I don't want you to steal my thunder. <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to... No, okay. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. All right, so any fact I know with Christopher Walken's voice. And, yep, and just start it with, did you know? Did you know that, that uh, if you work uh, uh, five years full-time job, uh, it'll be 10,000 hours in that certain field. And, uh, you know... That's, uh, that's the equivalent to mastering a trade. Wow. That's all I got. That was an incredible fact. I did not know that. <laughs> and that was... If, 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 a mediocre... <laughs> I, if that, if you, I mean, that was more of like, that was like scary walking. That was reindeer games walking. <laughs> I, I was picturing, what was I picturing? Like... I think it was Batman. I think it was like Batman 2. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. like dark walking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not I like your... that's what I was picturing. See, I'm, I'm talking more like, okay, you'll see. I'm, I'm more of like the character walking <laughs> that he... Okay. He, okay, so you'll see, you'll see. The the character that he plays basically now, where it's, which is basically himself in every movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. 
Did you know that cats, they have this special thing on their tongues, like little tiny arms that are like sandpaper so that they can grab things really hard. Yeah, all right. That was that was a lot better than that. <laughs> Dude, no, I think I think yeah, there was a place for your walk in. There really was. There's, I, I like. All right, well, that was that was great. That was <laughs> I, I definitely I definitely flew out there uh, in on un, un, uncharted waters for a second there, but I pulled it back at the end. <laughs> But dude, that was that was awesome. I never heard like g- a good like dark walk in. I really, I evil. liked it. I Walk-ins. liked it. Woo, so good. It was like it was like dead zone. Like you know, I I felt like if you shook my hand, you you know how I'm gonna die. You, you get to <laughs> you, you get to chill up your spine. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm I'm definitely gonna look up uh, Christopher Walken's voice after this and see how different it was than what I laid down. It so, was we'll hey, see. look up Dark Walken. I think you you'll find it wasn't as different as you think. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All right. Now we got our top five segment, and I thought I would delegate this to you, Joe, so that you could tell us what are the five things you do. To maintain your wellness. Five things that I do to, and let's be clear, when we say maintain wellness, we mean manage our mental health, manage my mental illness, because I identify as struggling with diagnoses in my life. I've had anxiety. I, I mean, I've had a lot of anxiety. I've had a lot of depression and OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Things have gotten pretty ugly sometimes, but I am an example of being able to keep going through it. So if that's, I don't know, any point of interest to anybody, it is absolutely possible. You can you can struggle, you can have freaking down days, and you can keep going. So. Absolutely. Well said, well said, my friend. Thank you. Anyways, so let's talk about what what I do, and, and it's definitely changed throughout my life. What I do to to maintain that, to to stay decent, to stay well. Five things that I think of at this time in my life. Okay, one big one is exercise. I definitely need to get my heart rate up, need to get a sweat on, need to get my brain thinking about other things other than what's rattling around inside my brain. Because when you exercise, you really think about your body. You think about your arms when you're lifting. You think about your legs. You think about the pain you're feeling and, and the moment when you're going to finish exercising. So it's really important to me to get my mind out of the gutter and get it on on this productive uh, movement. So that's a big one. I try to do it just half an hour a day. I, I'm, I'm trying to do it half an hour a day because that way I can do it the next day. If I do it for three hours... I ain't doing it for five days. <laughs> yeah. Fair so enough. little bits, consistency. That's what I. That's what I'm after. And then the other thing is, this is really original. This one, I watch movies. <laughs> and Indeed. Not not any specific movies. <laughs> I watch movies with my pa, my dad. I I go home to my parents, and I watch a good film. I watch whatever. Uh, I watched Manchester by the Sea with Affleck. I watched another movie recently. So I believe in, in the escape of television, of entertainment, of movies. Absolutely. And it's a social thing. Yeah. Okay, so what else? I I'm produ- I feel like productivity in my life is a major uh, important thing in my mental health. Rather than staying stuck in like the moment of, man, this sucks, and oh, the capital has been busted into. Not that you should not be aware of that and talk about that, because absolutely. But but just staying, staying stuck in that stuff and not doing some productive stuff for your own life in your situation... Um, I think that's not healthy. So, so it's yeah. important to stay productive. Absolutely, absolutely. It's definitely been said in many different media how when they say if you don't use it, you lose it, and that goes in with your sense of productivity, your sharpness in day to day. Like, you know, you can lose that. You know, when when you just don't necessarily 
as you say, you aren't necessarily going after that and you're just kind of being weighed down with, which is totally understandable, weighed down with a lot of that stuff, but distracting yourself by keeping busy, by doing things like that, that can help you, you know, ideally help you in your life. Yeah, absolutely. That's a fantastic, uh, fantastic yeah. piece of advice right there. Gotta keep moving. Absolutely. All right. And let's, we got two more All, along those same line, kind of goals and meaning and and i want to focus on meaning so in, in my life it's important for me to create meaning and kind of cling to that meaning with a death grip okay <laughs> to to create a reason beyond myself for living for getting through the day for when somebody pisses me off and i'm just like screw this it's like it's really important for me to have a a, a reason beyond um beyond my own existence to try to keep going so it's selfish and it's not selfish at the same time finding a meaning beyond yourself to live your life and to live it well a raison d'etre what's it say that again uh, Sorry. a raison d'etre I, th- I hope i'm pronouncing that right it's uh it's basically the term of what you said like a, of a reason to live beyond yourself something yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely Rise, yeah. raison d'etre. I'll, I'll have to look that up sometime. <laughs> yeah. And I heard, I heard a great quote. It's forge meaning, okay? This meaning, this reason for living, it doesn't always come easily. It definitely takes some thought and some, some living and some falling and some living to get to these things. So, so finding meaning, finding, you, you know, forging your meaning in your life, it takes work. It takes Indeed. work to get there. Indeed. All right, and then last one, rest. Yes, rest. Sleep hours. Oh, Have yeah. downtime. So my New Year's resolution is to try to have a day every week where I don't have to do things. Where where I can try to do some things. I'll do the dishes. Or, you know, I'll do that stuff. But, but not having big things planned that I need to do. So I can focus on the small things and I can recover from being busy. Um, oh. That's that's my new goal and that is definitely important to me. Good, good. And and you know what? You you definitely deserve that. Like I said, you're a man who wears many hats and as, as a person who wears many hats, you're incredibly busy uh, a lot and I definitely understand what that's like. It's in our line of work, we, we're just busy people that can really take over your life uh, emotionally, spiritually and really uh, take a lot out of you. So I think you're right. As a result, our own self-care and management and rest is is just paramount for us to be able to keep going. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing your top five, Joe. But I wanted to ask if there's any sort of projects or anything that you want to promote. You know, I know you uh, do caricatures. uh, And is that still Mm -hmm. something you do as well as a business as well still? Yeah, yeah. Oh, excellent. So I'm really busy these days. Well, I'm busy with uh, art projects. So I'm, I'm having a lot of uh, portraits, doing a lot of portraits for people, uh, mostly charcoal. I'm really trying to work on uh, do, doing it pretty realistic, pretty pretty fine charcoal portraits is, is kind of where I'm headed. And uh, I, I enjoy it, talking about the skill, talking about being productive. And I, I've also seen a good reaction from... Uh, the people I make them for. So that's rewarding and, and that's what I'm on. That's awesome. Well, hey, thanks. Thanks so much for sharing that, Joe. And I'm going to definitely put your uh, Instagram and everything down uh, in the in the info here on the, uh, the old podcast. <laughs> and The old podcast. The old podcast. <laughs> the good old podcast back home. <laughs> and, of course, you know, anything else uh, – I can do to help uh, promote what you do because, like I said, I love what you do, and, and you know I love what you do for the community and the people. And of course, I want a uh, big shout out to Life on Saturn Productions for uh, putting this together. So thanks, uh, thank uh, you, Joe, so much for doing this. I, I can't thank you enough. This, yeah, this has been super fun. I definitely had a great time. Did you, did you hear that noise, podcast listener? Did you hear? That's me winking at Aeon. Oh, 
I, I needed to make sure you could hear the noise because I'm giving him a wink because it's my pleasure to be here and to hang out and to <laughs> chat with you. It's been too long. Likewise. So, and if yeah. you can't hear it, I am massively blushing right now. So. Oh, he is. You can't hear the blushing, podcasters, but... Uh, wait, you can. It's... That's uh, yeah. the sound of blushing. All right, well... <laughs> well, thank you. It's, it's like ice... <laughs> All right. Well, That's great, man. Enough of that. Guys. Thank you, thank you. And you know what? Um, I, I definitely would love to have you on the show again. Maybe next time we can talk about... Something a little more wacky and silly, because uh, I know we definitely have that wacky and silly uh, side to us. So yeah. I'd love to explore that sometime. <laughs> so, and sober wacky and silliness. That's yes. what we like. Sober and... Uh, oh, and, absolutely. Uh, healthy, sober, wacky, and silly. Absolutely. I mean, and, yeah. and they're, they're, yeah, we're super silly, uh, super silly folks here. So thanks again, Cho. and. Yeah, and uh, to the listeners, uh, we got nothing. Bada bing. Hey, I'm Saturn Lunar Nova. Be sure to follow Life on Saturn Productions on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook to see our short films and music videos. Peace. <laughs>